Hello Aquarius gang, welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. We're going to read your tarot cards here today. Welcome, happy to have you all. So let's tap into that Aquarian energy. Let's get some weekly, bi-weekly-ish messages. Timeline of manifestation is of course up to you guys out there. This will be a general reading for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Uh, though anyone is welcome into this reading, cross watches included. Those peeking on their little Aquarius boo. I see you. I feel your energy. Let's see what's up. What's going on in Aquarius' life this week and the coming weeks? Uh, not everything I say will resonate with every single Aquarius out there. Uh, please take away only what resonates and release the rest. Uh, I hope these readings uh, motivate you, empower you, inspire you, resonate with you. If they don't, though, that's okay. Uh, it won't be your message every week. Please don't be offended if that is the case. Um, but yeah, I hope there's lots in here that you can take away for your best and highest good. Here we go, Aquarius, Aquarius. <clears throat> All right. All right, past position, King of Cups. All right, so far I'm digging it. Possibly something to do with a water sign. And then we have, oh my goodness, I'm, I didn't even look, I showed you first. That felt kind of symbolic for some reason. Uh, you, uh, Yeah, there's something about communication. You get word before anyone else does, and there's like... Um, I don't know. It's funny. Another sign had this message. It's like you want to share it, but you can't. It's almost like it's a secret and you're elated. You have really good news. I'm hearing work news. Um, I suppose it could be pregnancy for some of you. For most of you, it feels like you got a really nice job offer. But for some reason, and and I'm, I'm with it. I think it's solid advice to, um, I'm hearing words like non-disclosure. Uh, it's funny. Um, there's something that is not allowing you to communicate or express your very happy news yet. You will be able to, but it's mum's the word. Part of it is funny. I'm getting it superstition. You don't want to block your blessings. You're smart to do that, right? Keep it hush-hush until it's official, until it's in ink. You know what I mean? Um, others of you, I, again, maybe it, it, for some of you it might be pregnancy. There may be... Um, uh, news of pregnancy and maybe you just found out and there's that three month waiting period or whatever it is. I'm not, I'm out of touch with all that stuff. I'm not in that, that part of my life yet. But for some reason you get very positive news. Uh, the Ace of Swords is a brand new beginning. It's a new opportunity. It's a blessing from the divine. And I frequently I associate this with like a victory. You've conquered something that maybe was uh, quite challenging at one point in time. And yeah, I mean, it always this always happens it can go different ways this could be someone offering you a big cup of love because they love you they're your romantic partner this could be someone you are connecting with in your family if you are mending ties with your family if at once there was a severing or a a snag or a misunderstanding in communication if there was an argument it seems like you guys are bringing it back to hey let's let's just all get along Others of you, this could be a very positive job offer. If, uh, you know, money is a currency, it is a energy flow. So what fills your cup? Uh, the king of cups, for one. Uh, very, very possibly a male water sign may factor into this at a very solid foundation. Um, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Of course, it doesn't have to be. This could represent you as well. Um, working on your more spiritual side, working on your more um, intuitive psychic abilities even. In fact, as I say that, because this so has so much to do with the mind, that sword, air, energy, very much Aquarian, Libra, Geminian, yeah, there may be um, more, I'm almost getting psychic abilities are enhanced at this point, especially in your dreams. You may have had a dream that you got an offer or you got whatever this good news coming in in your near future is. You may have had a premonition or a dream about it. You may have received some sort of message from an angel guide or, you know, an oracle card, a tarot card reader, something that is much more uh, intuitive, spiritual based. Um, but it, boy, it feels good. Aquarius, I love this reading for you so far. Um, so if this is not your reading, if none of this is sounding familiar, uh, manifest it, right? This could be your reading in a couple months from now. So again, be open to the energies if you like something you hear. Uh, there you are. There's that Uranian energy. Love it. Yeah, this is the beginning of something new. Um, again, you, sometimes the fool says you have to take a leap of faith. You have to... Um, it's funny, I'm hearing you have to check your fear. You have to check your fear. Um, I heard something today that really, it was like this very short, simple thing, and it really spoke to me. What was it? Um, I think it's. I think it was like fear is the absence of faith. If you have faith that you're in good hands, that the universe is guiding you and going to take care of you, 
in a sense, that can help to diminish the fear you're feeling if you're starting a new job or, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, fear, illusion, mystery, not having all the pieces yet. And with cup energy, I'm sort of being called to say, but how do you feel? What do you know internally, especially intuitively? Keep in mind, sometimes the good stuff defies logic. Sometimes it doesn't seem possible when you write it down on paper. That doesn't mean it isn't coming in for you, right? Be open to unexpected gifts and blessings from the universe because you have that coming in. Um, what is troubling you? What is holding you back? Maybe just a little bit of indecision. Um, I'm hearing go all in. Some, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm hearing some of you may be struggling to invest all your time and energy into one job or one person or one location in fact merging um very uh, scorpionic energy with the seven of cups more scorpionic energy by the way there may be a merging of households a merging of bank accounts and so maybe if you've been doing the you know living here but commuting to your sweetheart's house you know maybe you guys are moving in together and maybe you're sort of projecting fear of oh my god this is a big step and what could go wrong I would say what could go right, you know, it, changing your perspective ever so slightly. This is a win. This is a victory. I almost called you Scorpio. That's funny. You you got a Scorpio coming in on your reading. I can feel it. All right. Um, let's talk about what is it that Aquarius needs to release, uh, move away from something they've been more reliant or um, leaning into more than, than needed? What is Aquarius in this spe uh, specific or particular reading being asked to move away from, distance themselves from, or just not utilize as much as they have been? Maybe something they've been using as a crutch that really isn't for their best and highest good. What, what do they need to release or move away from? <clears throat> Aquarius. What do they need to release or move away from? Negative thinking, pessimistic thinking, jumping to worst case scenarios. <clears throat> okay, and I'm, I'm going to say this too. This is not going to go down smooth, I can tell. So <laughs> for my strong-headed Aquarians who are sensitive earmuffs, there is sometimes a tendency for you to turn your back on people who are in need of your help. Um, absolutely set firm and healthy boundary lines that, um, where you both prioritize and value mutual respect. You know, if I help you, there's an unspoken, like you'll help me, but I wouldn't look at it in terms of, um, tit for tat, um, seeking only, or I'm sorry, only doing favors for people with the idea that they're going to hit you back. Hopefully they will. If they're a good friend, you won't have to worry about it. But if there is that questioning of tit for tat, then why are they in your life to begin with? Um, so there's two messages here. If here's it gets complicated because especially for those who resonate with the message of moving in with your sweetheart, starting a life together. If there is a merging going on in your life, business partners, marriages, whatever, this could be you need to move away from the idea that you're always going to be independent and on your own because you're going to start to make your other partner, your person start to feel isolated, the decision making, if there's a merging, starts to include two people, not just one. So if that's a new concept for you, Aquarius, um, and I'm not saying you're pig headed, I'm not saying anything like that, just a gentle reminder, if you're merging in any sense, this is no longer a one person decision, you need to start factoring in the ideas and the thoughts and the feelings of your counterparts, right? And in a positive way, this is going to help because you don't have to figure out everything on your own. You have someone there to help brainstorm and sort of spitball with you, right, on those big important decisions in your life. Just be cognizant and careful of who you may be turning your back on, if not physically, emotionally, mentally. Who needs to be considered that before it wasn't so much of an issue? That is coming up. Um, others of you, because it is coming up as what you need to release, if you are in a partnership that doesn't make you feel like this, you need to communicate what needs to be fixed. And if this person doesn't show up, then you need to cut it. You need to sever it. You need to look out for your best interest. Um, the thing is, I don't think that's the main message for most of you. Or if it is, you're casually dating and you're thinking of getting rid of one. Because, I don't know, something about this does kind of feel romantic to me, uh, especially with a water sign, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. This seems like it's getting more serious. There could be news of proposals or engagement or let's be exclusive. There could just be a lot of messages going back and forth 
on your dating app, on, you know, texting, calling each other, lots of communication, and it makes you feel happy. So who or what is getting in the way of that? Maybe this is an external party. And it doesn't have to be third party. It could just be a friend who's like, I don't like them. Like, who is inserting their opinion? And it's almost like, shish. This is like, it doesn't concern you. So I understand there. that's a muddled message in that it has two meanings. I guess it's really just asking you whose opinion do you value and to whom do you feel you need to consult or listen to in any future relationship, be it romantic or not. Um, and who are you... Um, who are you including too much in the mix? Again, if this is between you and your romantic partner, do you always need to turn to your brother, your sister, your best friend, you know, your coworker for dating advice when it's almost, I, I am getting something about more defined boundaries, like uh, work versus pleasure or separating parts of your life because I just have to be super honest. I don't do fear-based readings, but something about this feels like an energy impeding it upon your happiness that feels very weighted it feels very heavy and i don't mean to make anyone the monster or the bad guy but this feels like you may have a best friend who's really going through a hard time but because they're so in it their perspective is clouded by sort of their own personal struggle and so when you're coming in talking about how great things are whether they're a good friend or not they just kind of have this ability to like it takes the wind out of your sails. So do you have to abandon them? No, of course not. But if they're not contributing positively to any aspect of your life and you've already done your duty as the best friend to try and pull them out of it, you can't save this person. Eventually, they're going to need to step up and, and do the, uh, the uh, I almost didn't said strength work. That's funny. Uh, they're going to have to uh, step up and do their own spiritual work, right? No one can save them. No one can save you. We have people that we like, that we like to rely on when times get tough, but ultimately it's up to us. We have to step into our the highest version of ourselves when we're, when we're going through this. So in a sense, this card does say, hey, there's someone by your side if you need them. I'm almost getting though for some of you, because I don't think this is a romantic partner. For some of you, it's actually dragging you down by holding on to a partnership or a counterpart that... It's just not serving you anymore. You're on a different like spiritual plane than them. And so, again, up to you how severe this cut or this decision to exit that relationship needs to be. For most of you, though, you have something that blows this out of the water where I just, I would immerse yourself in this because it's so much more high vibrational than whatever this is. And to be honest, some of you may still be looking back at your past and wondering about that ex. I think getting into a new relationship may be triggering some of you, and uh, for the most part, it seems really nice, but you know, when you get into any sort of relationship, you reflect back on other people you've dated, right? Even if you're not sentimental about it, there might just be sort of like, you know, triggers or flare-ups of the way that person used to treat you. So again, the easiest way to avoid this sort of negative, I don't know how else to say it, uh, it really it's your thoughts going back to abandonment, hardship, uh, you know, fear of losing someone, whatever it is, is to express and communicate what you desire in a relationship with this newer person or in this really happy relationship you're in. Just don't be triggered by things that happened in the past, especially regarding another person. Give this person the benefit of a clean slate, right? You don't know them. You don't know their history. You don't know their background. Or maybe you do. But don't project your ex's baggage onto this new person because that's self-sabotage. Uh, and really, I think that's what this is, self-sabotage. Just be really... Um, Cognizant of who you're sharing your private and personal stories with, sharing too much with mom, dad, brother, sister about your romantic partnership, you just, I don't know, this week in general, you're being asked like, Shh, don't, just don't, <laughs> like don't, you're setting yourself up for, for disappointment by, and maybe it has to do with wanting or desiring people's permission or needing their permission, respect, admiration. If it's good for you, then go go forward with it because your truth, Ace of Swords, is the one that matters the most right now. Um. All right, so what can I tell Aquarius they have as help available to them this week? Something they need to lean into, embrace, something they need to utilize more or focus on that could be something uh, helpful to them. Again, this is probably something you need to release or distance yourself from at, at minimum. <clears throat> fair partnership is really important uh equal equal uh equilibrium balance 
counterpart. The scales, right? Libra-esque energy. Is it balanced? Is it equal? Well, if it isn't, what are you going to do about it? You have options. There is no right or wrong answer, but it does need to be... Um, you need to have a game plan. You need to have a strategy. Interesting. Uh, okay. I think this has to do with unexpected surprises. Um, and also, again, there's this thing about not sharing exciting news too soon so that you don't block your blessings. You have the tower. Generally, I don't love the tower card. I think most tarot readers would say that, but not all. Some people do. I don't mind this if this is shocking surprises. Again, you may get word from, uh, I don't know, a job you thought you didn't get, or the thing is, I think you know you aced it, though. Again, something about that psychic intuitive hits this week. I, I almost see this as you wanting to make a very um, triumphant exit from a, a former job or a former relationship, or I don't know what this is. There's something just about... <clears throat> There's like an explosion. You're launched. You're liberated from something that was, it was a long time coming, but you're finally free of it. And I don't know, whatever is replacing this, it's amazing. But there's just something about like, shh, like mum's the word. Don't tell anyone this week. I don't think this tower is, is bad. Um, I'm trying to see kind of how these cards are, are speaking to one another, if you will. So, okay, I think for a lot of you, you get news of a new job and you may be severing a ties with an old company, an old corporation, an old job, an old partner. You're so excited to do it, but is there a necessary waiting period? Again, contracts, Libra-esque energy, I would wait till the ink has been dried. I would wait until you've signed the contract before you dip out or, again, make a grand exit, your, your swan song at your, you know, former place of business. I would just make sure everything's set in stone, okay, especially because Mercury is about to go retrograde. <clears throat> I am a big proponent of don't live your life in fear. It doesn't, it doesn't help you. It doesn't do anything for you. Be cognizant of what's going on with the planets, your birth chart, your astrology, because why wouldn't you want to use that to your benefit if you have additional information on maybe what the stars could predict or cast in your near future? Mercury is going retrograde, I believe, this Saturday. Um, and it's going to be there for a while. So again, does that mean you have to just freeze time and not do anything? Of course not. I wouldn't advise signing new contracts then if you can help it. But you know what? If this is your dream job, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Um, I would handle with care. I would double check a lot. I would, uh, what was that expression? Cross your T's and dot your I's twice. Um, but yeah, it's something about having a backup plan or reinforcement, because uh, here's the thing. I think in the long run, this is going to be fine, but there's going to be one thing that falls short that you didn't expect. So rather than having to like run to the bank last minute to pull out the withdrawal and the bank closes, anticipate the unexpected. And I know that's really wonky and hard to do. There's something that comes out of nowhere that's very abrupt. But because this is what you're meant to lean in or focus on, try and dissect or analyze, okay, do I have my ducks in a row? Do I have a backup plan? What if this were to happen? Could I get here in time? Do you know what I mean? Like safety proof yourself. Double check. Um, make a list. Be very um, proactive in anticipation of what may be needed from you before you're asked. So that way, even if there's an unexpected surprise, you, you have a nice little uh, safety net uh, to, to help you through it. Wheel of Fortune, though, again, like, I don't think this is necessarily a bad tower. This could just uh, say, uh, be excited for the shocking and, and, and eventful news that comes your way in the coming weeks. Again, what you're building towards is this, bottom of the deck, Wheel of Fortune. Things are changing in a very positive direction. Okay, I would even say... There may be a circumstance that arises very unexpectedly. And again, don't jump to worst case conclusions or worst case scenario. And I hate to say don't. I try really hard not to do that in my tarot readings. I would advise, I would suggest that even if you get hit with like a shocking piece of news and you're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? The fact that the universe is saying, no, 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 like don't, don't jump to that conclusion because this tower I sent you, you're welcome. This is setting you up for huge success. So it's going to be hard to see in the moment. In the moment, you may get very heavy news. I'm just, I'm throwing this at you. Your, your counterpart, your coworker up and quits their job and now all this work is falling on you and you're like, 
oh my god, what am I gonna do? But it's that's not that's not where the story ends though. This tower moment, this shocking or unexpected news, actually puts you in a very advantageous position. But when you the news is first relayed to you. Again, Mercury retrograde, there's a lot of miscommunication on how this impacts you, and it's not for the worse, it's actually for the better. So hang in there, give yourself the luxury of time to see what tapers out from this scenario, because it, it could be something where you think you're going to get all this work, and then they say something like, you know what, we're actually going to put you in this position instead, and we're going to bring on like another person to, to, count, like, to take on that workload. Or something about there's like a shifting of titles or heads or bodies where it's like, oh, well, th that worked out lovely for me, and I didn't really have to do anything. Whatever this is, it's good. Don't fear the tower. But yeah, one more time, I'm just going to say uh, anticipate the unexpected as best you can. Have a safety net wherever you can. All right? Aquarius, this is a good reading. I'm into it. I'm curious about your water sign. Actually, let's throw one on that. Let's throw one on that. And then we're going to wrap it. What can I tell Aquarius about this water sign? I feel like now that I amped it up, gosh, I hope the cards are good. <laughs> well, whatever it is, maybe you guys are coming off of a relationship with a water sign. We'll see. We'll see. The High Priestess, you already know. You have too many cards. Come on. <laughs> okay, this might be a reunion, a water sign from your past. It, it could even be someone you, you meet. It doesn't have to be someone from your past, but I'm just going to finish this. There could be a one of those weird chance encounters where you run into an ex or someone. Someone, I'm going to say, who was always interested in you, even if you never dated. You may run into them at, like, the supermarket or something, and then you go home thinking, like, well, is this, it, could this be something? If it's new, it might be something like that. Others of you, it's just been a long time waiting to get to them. I don't know if you guys are at a distance doing like a long distance relationship thing. Um, I don't think this is third party. You do have a Cancerian card coming up, but maybe that's you, the high priestess. There's something kind of scorpionic about that too. Um, but yeah, I, I would say uh, if this is a new person, be social, go out, be safe, wear your mask, bring your sanitizer, everything you need to do to, again, safety proof. But yeah, there could be like a really strong intuitive psychic unspoken connection where you you guys both go home kind of thinking about each other the catch is that if you're gonna engage more romantically with this person you have to sever off the ex you can't have it all you can't have them both you really have to understand that the cups that were once fulfilling at one point in time it filled your cup it made you happy it made you elated if that's not the case anymore, you know, maybe best to take advantage of this new offering, this new blessing from the universe. But again, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You have to make a choice. And so some of you will have to deliberate, am I ready to be in a new relationship? Or am I ready to give up being single, being independent? Because there's something about this. It, it feels very, it has some weight to it. It has longevity, but in a, in a very positive, buoyant way, this, this feels very exciting. These fell out. <laughs> you're probably going to sleep with this person very quickly okay this could uh, i don't mean to be crude for anybody who who is i don't know i'm just gonna say this this could start off as one or both of you thinking oh it's just like a one night stand it's just a fling it's like it's just for fun it's nothing serious that's not true <laughs> i think you're gonna you're gonna see in the long run that you catch feelings for this person or vice versa what starts off as like a very small offer of yeah like what are you doing later tonight want to come over it's like something about that that uh, encounter, that, that, I don't know, the sex. Something about it is like very powerful. It's like you hold on to the energy of it, and I think it becomes much bigger. I think this person makes your history book. Aquarius, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, that's what I got for you this week, Aquarius. Um, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Other than that, I will see you next Thursday for more tarot. Bye, guys.